early August and uh, Zach and I are back out on public land today. We're doing another one of our little scouting missions and we've been uh, on these things all four or five times a week for the last couple months. And uh, going into this season, we're doing things a bit differently. Every year up to this, I've uh, always concentrated on hunting doe bedding areas in the rut and the funnel areas and that sort of thing. But one thing we've noticed is that public land gets the most pressure in uh, the middle of the rut. But in early October, there's very few people out here. And uh, we were able to kill your buck last year in the middle of October. And uh, this year, we're going in and we're specifically trying to find mature buck bedding areas with adjacent food sources that um, those bucks will be targeting in October, like acorns, for instance. Yep. We're excited to see how this uh, new tactic, new strategy is going to play out this year. Um, uh, it's going to be a school of hard knocks, I'm sure, but uh, it'll be fun to try. We got lots of public land to try it on. So. At the very least, we'll get to hunt more in October. Yeah, that's right. And we're going to go back here and check out this new spot right now and hopefully find a great location for an October tree stand. Right through here. Another one right here, leading straight out, where they can come in, lay down, stand up, and, try, and leave. I don't even know if they can hardly turn around in here and sit there. Well, that spot looks just like we wanted it to, but uh, the perfect tree down there has got a tree stand in it. Hmm. Well, that's the first one of the year, at least. Yeah, it stinks when you walk all the way back here and uh, you find a stand in it. They're technically not supposed to be in the trees right now, but uh, whatever, somebody's obviously gonna be hunting there this fall. That kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier with our main strategy this fall was trying to hunt more in October. Seems like uh, the most pressure is in the rut and people always head straight towards the most obvious funnels and this one from an aerial photograph is definitely an obvious funnel. Oh well. Seemed too good to be true, and I guess it was. Yeah, you win some, <laughs> you lose some out here. On to the next one. Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Hoyt Archery, Fuse Accessories, Real Tree, Muddy Outdoors, Cabela's, Rocket Broadheads, Scott Archery. Frigid Forage, Trophy Rock, Easton Arrows, RTP Outdoors, Non-Typical Wildlife Solutions, Deer Grow, Ozonics, Wilderness Athlete, Grizzly Coolers, Redneck Hunting Blinds, and Nikon. I think we found us a good fall buck bed right here and uh, I can't guarantee that a mature buck is using it by any means but this is the specific area that I've been targeting uh, a deer that we call Butch. I filmed him over here last year in the Big Woods unit in the summertime. I got a few trail camera pictures of him. This is really the only little ridge in here where nobody accesses for hunting purposes. Most of the hunter access is across this big ditch to the west four or five hundred yards away where Mike and I killed his buck last year and all the trail camera pictures I got of Butch and the other mature bucks in here was all coming up out of this general area but this is the first legitimate good spot for a buck to bed it's up high kind of above a lot of that major bedding down below us where a lot of the does are I mean we found piles of doe tracks down there and then there's this little bed that's right here on the end of this point as you can see it's all rubbed up there's rubs uh, specifically where the bucks enter and exit the bed. Right there where Corey is sitting, there's an exit trail. Right here to my right, there's another exit trail. Straight over my back, there's another exit trail. And on any kind of a southwest, west, southeast wind, he can bed right here, smell everything behind him, see everything down in front of him for quite a distance because he's up here on this hill. Makes a lot of sense. And when Greg and I hunted here, we set up a stand about 200 yards from this spot. Um, I believe it was mid-November last year and we had two bucks come straight up out of this general area. One of them very well could have been bedding in, in this bed. 
we're gonna mark it on the GPS and hopefully get lucky and catch Butch in here this fall. Well, we just came from over there on that south ridge in the original spot that I was hoping to find a bed and we uh, are walking out and we decided to check this um, south facing ridge straight north of that one. So as a crow flies, we're probably 300 yards from that other bed that we found. Now, we just found another big bed in about the same type of a situation, right on the point of this ridge, sort of overlooking these little bottoms, except this bed is set up for a north wind. As you can see, it's got all the characteristics of a big buck bed. I mean, it's all smashed down in here. Um, you can obviously see that one's been laying here a lot. Right in between these two dead logs, he's got cover to his back right here where he can watch straight out this end of the bed. If you kind of look behind me, it's open. But right in here, it's pretty thick. And there's lots of rubs on each one of his exit trails. I mean, it's a carbon copy of the one that we just found. Except this one is set up for any northerly wind. That's north over there. So on a northwest, a north, or a northeast, he can bed right here, watch the does, everything down below him, and smell anything coming from behind him in this spot and it has a lot in common with that other spot and the fact that it's in the dead center of this property where nobody ever goes it is public land but we are way way back in here and um, I mean I've been hunting this place for three years and I've never made it this far back but this deer has been tough for us to get on so we figured that we needed to get way back in here and and maybe find where he's holed up and we might have found it today Heading out for our afternoon hunt here on November 7th in southern Iowa. This area where we're hunting tonight to go to the highest spot in the farm where we can see forever. This is also a spot where these deer like to cross from one woodlot to another. It's a, it's a natural intersection for those deer to travel through. I'm out here on the farm today in one of my favorite spots. We're up by the old stupid tree. Basically, this is also the same spot that last year, the night I shot that nine point out of the redneck blind behind me, the old decoy eight was standing right here with the buck we call groomer. And if you're not familiar with it, it's a, one of the highest spots on the farm where basically two big sections of timber come to a, two corners. And these deer cross back and forth between these two sections of timber. So the stand has always been good on its own. As the story goes, many years ago, my buddy Kurt was hunting on a different part of the farm and he could see this spot and every deer, he said, crossed right next to that stupid tree. And that's a tree that's, that um, we've had success on over the years. There's always been food up here, so there's always been that attractant. During the rut, those bucks, if they're checking one section of timber or the other section of timber for does, or even just making their way through here for food, um, when I shot that nine point last year, he was just out here, so was the decoy eight. One of the enhancements we've done up here is tried to get pretty much every type of food that the whitetail is going to want pretty much any time of the year. So, so you can see we've got clover up here by the apple trees. We've got probably two acres of corn that is going to remain and we've got turnips. So there is all kinds of food up here and it all comes together right in front of the stupid tree. Right between the stupid tree and the redneck blind. Another improvement I'm excited about here on the farm is the apple trees that I planted this spring and um, they're really doing well. Um, I followed Eli's instructions. We watered, we um, sprayed for insects, um, we fertilized when we were told to. We've got them all fenced off so the deer don't uh, browse them or rub their antlers on them in the fall. So the apple trees are something that I'm excited about. It's not going to help me this year but I'm sure in the years to come if they continue to do well they're going to produce apples and the deer will follow.
One other thing we did a couple weeks, or actually uh, one week ago, we buried a big old bathtub there. So we've got a water hole because there's not really any water up on top here. So those deer that follow these ridges, it'll be water for those deer. And um, hopefully that'll be a spot. It's in, it's in shooting range where we can uh, actually get a shot if any of these deer are crossing and stop. As you can see, this stand has been a great spot for me in the past. And I'm hoping that the enhancements that I've made will even make it better for years to come. Some of these things aren't gonna affect me right away. It's gonna take the deer a while to find the water. It's gonna take a while for the apple trees to produce. But over time, it's gonna be even better than it is now. So that's the setup. Now let's talk about some of the deer that we're looking for this year. First and foremost, it's gonna be the decoy eight. He's actually turned into the decoy nine and a half this year, but he looks good. It's him for sure. Same wraparound frame, a little bigger maybe than last year. And as I said, I got a picture of him standing right here this morning, coming across this little opening. There's a buck we called split switch. He's on the farm again this year. And this year, for whatever reason, he doesn't have a split on anything. He was a deer, he's a big 10 that used to get a split in different spots every year. However, this year he's just a clean 10 but he's the same deer. He's got those little droops at the end of his main beams. There's another new deer on the farm that's really cool, I think. He's a big nine point with a sticker on one of his twos. And he's kind of in the middle of the farm. We've got some beans over there protected with a hot zone fence. And we've got some beans that aren't protected and he's in there almost every night I get pictures of that deer. So he's another cool deer that's on the farm. Um, another one of our regulars that's been around last year. In fact, Aaron was with me last year on a morning hunt and Mr. Mom was up here, way down at the end of the field here. I grunted at him and I called him directly underneath the tree. Well, he was a goofy little, we weren't sure if he was two and a half or three and a half this, last year, but this year he's kind of blown up. He's got more junk. He's got the same tight frame, but uh, he's a really cool deer. I really think that's a deer I probably won't shoot this year, simply because he's got so much crazy stuff going on. I think if he could make it another year, he could really turn into like a freak. So. He's, he's a deer I'm sure we'll probably see during the season, but it's not a deer that we'll probably, you know, launch an arrow at. There are a couple other deer that have been roaming the farm this year, and it seems like for whatever reason there's more mature bucks around. I'm not saying giants, they're not talking seven or eight year old deer, but it seems like there's more of the four or five year old deer. There's one deer that I got pictures of um, in a little bean patch that's just got a giant body. I mean, this deer is an old deer. He's just a big 10 with real short brow tines, but he's a really cool deer. So there's, a, there's some new deer showing up. I would say last year when we went into the season, there were three or four deer that I probably would have shot on this farm. I'd say this year there's probably seven or eight deer that I would take a good look at and see. So it seems like after EHD and everything's kind of run its course that the population is kind of working its way back. Um, we're not in the glory days again, but it's certainly getting better than it was the last couple of years. So this is a spot I'm really excited to get into this fall. However, one of the things that we've always kind of said has helped our success is that we hunt these spots carefully. We wait till the winds are just right. We don't make a lot of intrusions up here. Um, check cameras every couple weeks, that's it. And other than that, everything's in place right now. We can leave it alone and uh, come in when the time is right. Hopefully we'll have as good a luck as we've had the last couple years. As you can see, there's been a lot of activity here at Midwest Whitetail as the teams are getting ready for the season it's now a month away. Less than a month from now, we're gonna be in the tree. So there's a few things that we have to do between now and then. I still have to get out and plant some autumn quick plot on the farm. Uh, that's the blend that Frigid Forge makes that's best adapted for late planting. And I've got a couple of plots here that are sprayed, uh, ready to go. I just need to get the Genesis drill out there and run through those and get the autumn quick plot in the ground. Uh, pretty soon, I'm gonna start getting the cameras out. And I've got, boy, three or four bucks that I would love to find that we left from last season. Uh, one last thing I want to touch on before I let you go this week. Uh, one of our sponsors is Wilderness Athlete and they have what's called a 28 day challenge. We're talking about the fact that we're now a month away from the start of the season. That, that month is the perfect window for taking on this Wilderness Athlete Challenge. 
One of our pro staffers, Drew McLean from Ohio, wrote a blog about this that showed up on Midwest Whitetail, and that got me to thinking about it. Uh, this is, these are products that I use as a normal part of my routine, but there might be something that would be worth uh, learning more about. And the perfect way to get, in, to get introduced to the Wilderness Athlete System is to take this 28-day challenge. You're a month away from hunting, you got a month to get into shape so that you can hunt aggressively and safely, so this is the perfect way to get going along that process. Also, one more thing, don't forget about our Chasing November series. You can go to the ChasingNovember.com website and watch all 24 episodes there, or you can go to our YouTube channel. And pretty soon now, it either is on Roku and Apple TV and Amazon Fire, or it very soon will be. Uh, so be sure if you've got a streaming TV to start looking for us. That'll be under Whitetail TV is the name of the channel. But Chasing November will be a playlist inside of the Whitetail TV channel. Well, I appreciate you joining me this week. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big.